everyone, welcome back to the second part of the challenging questions of O-Level Chemistry from GCSE and IGCSE. So we are doing this question, it says, many organic compounds such as alcohols, carboxylic acids and acids contain the elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen only. Compound R has the following composition by mass. And now they want us to calculate the empirical formula. So for empirical formula, we have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Carbon is 60.0%, hydrogen is 13.3%, and oxygen is 26.67%. In the first step, we find their moles. So we divide the percentages by their atomic masses. We'll find the first, like first we'll find the moles. So 60 divided by 12 is obviously 5. 13.3 divided by 3 is obviously 13.3 itself. And 26.67 divided by 16 is going to be 1.67 then we find the molar ratio so for ratios we divide everything by the smallest value which is 1.67 13.3 divided by 1.67 and obviously 1.67 divided by the same value oxygen gives us a ratio of 1 hydrogen which is 13.3 divided by 16 sorry 1.67 gives us a value of 7.9 which is almost 8 and when 5 divided by 1.67 is done it gives us a value of 2.99 I'll put everything a little smaller over here so carbon is almost 3 hydrogen is 8 oxygen is 1 so C3H8O compound S has the empirical formula C2H4O and a relative molecular mass of 88 calculate the molecular formula so we know that first molecular formula is equals to empirical formula times n. n is equals to the ratio of the masses. So n is equals to molecular mass divided by the empirical formula mass. When we do that, we get to know that it's going to be 88 divided by the mass of C2H4O. So empirical formula mass is equals to 12 times 2 plus 1 times 4 plus 16 times 1. So that's going to be 24 plus 4 plus 16. That's 44. So the value of n turns out to be 2. Empirical formula was C2H4O. n was 2 because we just found that. So it's going to be c 4 h 8O. Compound T and V both have the molecular formula C3H6O2. Compound T produces bubbles of carbon dioxide when, it's, when it is added to aqueous sodium carbonate. This test that you produce bubbles of carbon dioxide with sodium carbonate means T is an acid. Compound V is an ester. They have already mentioned V is an ester. What is the name given to compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures? So that's going to be isomers. Draw the structure of the compounds T and V. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. T, like we said, was, an was a carboxylic acid. So it's obviously going to be propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. So it's going to be three carbon atoms. The carboxylic acid functional group like this. And the rest of them should be hydrogens. That is propanoic acid. Compound V is an ester. So we can put two carbons on one side and third carbon on the other side. In between, we can put the ester functional group, which looks like this. And the rest has to be hydrogens. Moving on. All compounds with the molecular formula C3H6O2 can undergo complete combustion in an excess of oxygen. Complete the chemical equation. So three carbons means three carbon dioxides. And six hydrogen atoms mean three water molecules. How many oxygens do we need? So we need six oxygen atoms to make carbon dioxides and three oxygen atoms to make waters. So 3 plus 6 is 9. We need 9 over 2 oxygen molecules. Compound W has the molecular formula C2H6O. 
compound W reacts with heated W reacts when heated with ethanoic acid and a catalyst to produce a sweet smelling liquid. Sweet smelling liquids are esters. So when ethanoic acid reacts with W, which has a formula C2H6O, give the name of the homologous series to which compound W belongs. So if W is reacting with acid, then it has to be an alcohol because only alcohol plus acids will give you ester plus water. So W has to be an acid. Draw the structure of compound W. So now we know one thing that W was a two carbon compound. Ethanoic acid also is a two carbon compound. They have the carboxylic acid functional group between them which looks like this. Sorry, they have the ester functional group, which looks like this. W was the alcohol. So if W was the alcohol and the two carbon other portion comes from the ethanoic acid, acids also have carbonyl on them. So the right side portion represents acidic part and the left part represents W. We put hydrogens on them. This way our ester, which is ethyl ethanoate is complete it has to be named ethyl ethanoate the ethyl part comes from the w and ethanoate part came from the ethanoic acid alkanes and alkenes are hydrocarbons what's meant by the term hydrocarbons so it's compounds that contain hydrogen and carbon atoms only state the general formula of alkanes which is c2h2n sorry cn h double n plus 2 and alkene is cn h double n ethanol can be produced from long chain alkanes as shown describe the two stage manufacture of ethanol from the long chain alkane octane c8h18 Include the names of the types of the chemical reactions, reaction equations, and conditions. So in step one, you can see a long chain alkane is making ethene. That means it's cracking. So step one is cracking, where C8H18 is, break down, is broken down to make C2H4, which is ethene. And you can say the rest of the structure should be C6 because six carbons are remaining. And when you count the number of hydrogens, 18 minus four has to be 16. So H16 is remaining. And when you count the number of hydrogens, 18 minus four is equals to 14. So H14 is remaining. Moving on, what do we need? So this is cracking. It requires heated aluminum oxide catalyst at 450 Celsius or higher. What about step two? In step two, ethene is made into ethanol. So that is addition of steam. In a lot of books, you will also find this reaction as hydration what do you need for that you need steam and phosphoric 5 acid catalyst phosphoric 5 acid catalyst at 300 degrees celsius when ethene is taken and steam is added you get C2H6O. So now we'll do this question. It says iron 2 sulfate and lead 2 sulfate are examples of salts. A student prepared iron 2 sulfate crystals starting from iron 2 carbonate. So iron 2 sulfate was prepared, which is FeSO4. Iron 2 carbonate is FeCO3. The student carried out the step experiment in four steps. The student added excess iron 2 carbonate to a small volume of dilute sulfuric acid until no more iron 2 carbonate would react. 
The student filtered the mixture. The student heated the filtrate obtained from step 2 until it was saturated. The student allowed the hot filtrate to cool to room temperature and then removed the crystals um, which formed. How did the student know when the reaction had finished in step 1 if I am not wrong? Yes. So when it's an excess, it means excess iron 2 carbonate settled at the bottom number one because iron 2 carbonate is insoluble base and another thing you should know is this when a carbonate is added to acid it gives carbon dioxide so when a carbonate is added to acid it gives carbon dioxide gas so no more effervescence could be seen this is another hint that the reaction was complete name the residue in step 2 so when the filtration was done excess iron 2 carbonate iron 2 carbonate was the residue unsaturated sorry saturated solution forms in step 3 what is a saturated solution so a saturated solution contains maximum amount of solute dissolved at a particular temperature so it can't dissolve more solute explain why iron to sulfate crystals form during step four so when a saturated solution is cooled the solubility decreases and when solubility decreases what happens to the extra solute it forms the crystal so as temperature drops solubility decreases solubility decreases and the solute forms crystals Magnesium sulfate crystals are hydrated. Hydrated means moles of water attached to the salt. Another student heated some hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals in a crucible and obtained the following results. Mass of hydrated magnesium sulfate plus empty crucible, mass of empty crucible mass of residue after heating plus crucible so calculate the number of moles of water removed so for that we need to understand that in the beginning the substance had water of crystallization but in the end the substance did not have water of crystallization the crucible is same on both sides so crucible will cancel each other if we subtract 24.55 minus 20.65 that shows how much water is gone so that shows mass of water removed so that is going to be let's use our calcul it's going to be 24.55 minus 20.65 so 3.90 3.90 gram is the mass of water removed. Calculate the number of moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate remaining in the crucible. So anhydrous magnesium sulfate means after heating. So mass of magnesium sulfate is equals to 20.65 minus 18.90 because you're concerned with only the substance, not the crucible. So 20.65 minus 18.90. That's going to be 1.75. Calculate. Okay, they're concerned with the moles in both scenarios. So let me solve the moles also. 3.90 divided by 18 is equals to the moles. So 3.90 divided by 18 is going to be the moles. 0.216. And 1.75 was the mass of magnesium sulfate. 20.65 minus 18.9. So that's 1.75 grams 
mole is equal to 1.75 divided by the MR, which is 120. So that divided by 120, 0 0.0145. These are the moles. Calculate the ratio of moles of anhydrous magnesium sulfate to the moles of water. So how do we do that? 0 0.0145, 0 0.216. When we divide both by the smaller value, which is 0 0.0145, 0 0.0145, this becomes 1. And this value, which is 0 0.216 divided by 0 0.0145, gives us 14.89. So that's almost 15. 14.89 equivalent to 15 such as the formula of hydrated magnesium sulfate crystals so mg so4 dot 15 h2o lead to sulfate is insoluble describe how you would prepare a pure dry sample of lead to sulfate crystals include a series of key steps in your answer so first we take v Take dilute sulfuric acid in a test tube and we take dilute lead nitrate salt solution in another because dilute sulfuric acid will provide sulfate ions and lead will provide lead ions. We mix them in a beaker then we mention there precipitates a pair and settle at the bottom settle at the bottom what do we do next we filter out the precipitates using filter paper when you filter out, we wash the precipitates with distilled water. We distilled water. Once you wash them, the precipitates are clean, but they are wet. So we dry the precipitates using folds of filter paper. Include the ionic equation for the reaction which takes place. So lead ions were taken from the lead nitrate and sulfate ions were taken from the dilute sulfuric acid. You prepared the precipitates of lead to sulfate.